So hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to tackle a really important topic which is how to add push notifications to your Expo app. About a year ago I created a video with pretty much the exact same topic and mostly the same content. However the way things work in Android actually changed a bit so I felt the need to upload a new video in order to keep things current. So for those of you who haven't set up Expo and push notifications in your app before, I recommend watching the entire video and following all the steps. Some of you though are just here for the Android updates. I'm gonna leave a timestamp in the description and if you wanna just update your Android part, you can just jump there and do what you need to do. It's not very long, you can kind of update things and get on your way. Okay, with that, let's get into the coding. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we're gonna do here is the actual TypeScript part. I'm gonna go a little slower for the explanation in the TypeScript part because it's where most of the thinking actually takes place. But when it comes to working with EAS and the Apple push notification services and Firebase, Expos kind of simplified things so much that you really don't have to think too much about it. So I'm gonna go more quickly through that part. Most of our thinking and most of our work is gonna be done here in TypeScript. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is install our dependencies and we'll install Expo Notifications, Expo Device, and Expo Constants. Now that that's done, I'm gonna create a new file called Use Push Notifications. And in here, I'm gonna import the usual suspects of Use State, Use Effect, and Use Wrap. We're also gonna need our device library. We're gonna need our notification library. We're gonna need our constants. And then we're gonna need platform from React Native. Okay, so the next thing we need to think about is what we're actually gonna return from this hook. And what we're gonna return is two things. First, and the most important, being the notification itself, because you're probably gonna to wanna to use the notifications information in your app. The second is just for debugging. That's the Expo push token. And we're gonna use that a little bit later on. Normally, you wouldn't really spread that throughout your app, but we're gonna need it for debugging today. So I'm gonna export it. So I'm gonna call this interface push notification state or push notification state. Maybe it's a little better. Sorry, actually I'll call it just notification, not expo push notification. And it's gonna be of type notifications dot notification. And then we have expo push token, and that's gonna be of type notifications dot expo push token. Okay, so at this point, what we're gonna do is actually create the hook. If you've been in the expo documentation already, you're probably gonna notice that this code looks very similar to that. That's because it is. Basically what I did was took their code and refactored it into a nice hook that's very reusable. You could pretty much copy paste this hook into any expo project and it'll work very nicely. I thought that'd be a great service for you guys and something that I enjoy doing as well. So yeah, just wanted to shout out the Expo documentation there really quickly. So for the hook, I'm gonna say we're gonna export const use push notifications and it's gonna return our push notification state type. First thing I'm gonna do is set up the notifications handler and in here it has a nice function called handle notification. And this returns an object that has a few different settings. First, this should play sound. I'm gonna set that to false. I'm gonna say should show alert is true. Whoops. And finally, I'm gonna say should set badge should be false. I'm now gonna create a couple of states. The first is gonna be for the expo push token. The type here is a little long, so I'm gonna kind of copy paste that from above. And of course it can be expo push token or undefined because when the app starts, you don't have an expo push token. The next one is gonna be the notification. And similar to the above, the notification can either be notification or undefined because you don't always have a push notification, of course, right? Next thing we're gonna do is we're going to add a couple of listeners. And these aren't gonna come into play right away. It's gonna take a minute for us to use them. But the reason we need them is of course, because notifications are not imperative by any means. They're events, they can come in randomly for any reason at any time. So we need to set up listeners to handle those. First is gonna be called notification listener and it's gonna be of type notifications dot subscription. And the second one's gonna have the same type and it's gonna be the response listener. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a function 
And this function is going to kind of form the basis of everything that we're going to do with push notifications. We need this one to set up permissions and to get the listeners going and the token and everything else. So we're going to call this function register for push notifications async. So we're going to make our token a let here because we're going to try to retrieve it and it might end up being undefined if there's errors. So we're going to say if the device is a device, then we're going to do this. The reason we have to do this check is because this really only works on physical devices. It doesn't work on simulators. So you have to check. I'll just do a console log if something happens here. Error, please use a physical device. But if you are on a normal device, what we're going to do is we're gonna get your permission status. And we get that from notifications dot get permission async. Of course, we have to put our async there because it uses async await. Oh, and I forgot syntax there. There we go. <laughs> All right. A little bit of a goof there. Okay, so we're gonna say our final status is going to be equal to the existing status. We're using a let here because this of course could change. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say if existing status is not equal to granted, what we're gonna do is try and basically request uh, the permissions. So we're gonna say notifications dot request permissions async. And if that goes through, our final status is gonna be equal to the status. All right, so if that's not the case and the final status is not equal to granted still, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do an alert and say that we failed to get the push token. Okay, so at this point, we really should have all the stuff that we need. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to take our token and we're gonna say that we want to get push notification async. And we can do that under notifications. I think I made a typo. Dot get expo push token. And in here, I'll give a project ID and the project ID is under constants. This is a lot of typing. Dot expo config. Dot extra. Dot es. Dot project ID. Finally, what we're going to do is, if we're on Android, we need to do one more thing. We need to set our notification channel. And this is important. It's kind of an Android only thing. iOS doesn't really have this. But basically for Android users within apps, you can mute certain notification channels. For today, we're just gonna use default. I'm not gonna get into any kind of advanced stuff, but just something to keep in mind later on if you ever wanna customize things a little more. I'll just use the same name, default, default. I'm gonna make these notifications super, super important. Dot Android importance dot max, just to make sure they really get the notification. You can also customize the vibration pattern. I'm just gonna do something really simple here because again, nice to know, but I'm not really too into the Android ecosystem. So I don't know how crazy you can get with that kind of stuff. Finally, I'll just give it a nice little color there. Last thing we need to do is just return our token. All right, so now that our registration is function is good to go, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set up all the listeners and the push note push token and everything else. We start by creating use effect with no dependencies because we're just gonna do this when the actual thing mounts. So we're gonna register for push notifications async. That's gonna give us back a token. And once we have that token, we're gonna set the token in the actual hook itself. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our notification listener. And that's gonna have notifications dot add notification received listener. That's gonna give us back a notification. And then we're gonna set our notification using the one that we get back. Next, we're going to set up our response listener. 
Whoa. Is that what I called it? Response listener? Oh, I made a typo. <laughs> All right. I'll copy paste that down here now. Response listener dot current is going to be equal to notifications dot add notification response listener. And this is the response. And I'm really just going to console log it because we don't really use it in this app. But in case you ever wanted to do that, that's how you set up the listener. Finally, if we need to clean things up, we return our function here. And then we can do notifications dot remove notification subscription. And we would do that with the notification listener dot current. And I'm gonna use the bang operator cause I'm extremely confident it's gonna be there. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the response listener. Finally, the last thing we need to do is I'm going to return our expo push token and our notification. All right, so at this point, the last thing that we're gonna do here in TypeScript is we're just gonna use all this information from the hook. So at the top level of the app, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use our use push notifications hook and I'm gonna use the exported expo push token and the notification. What I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna get the data so that I can just display it all raw and I'll take the notification and I will pretty print this so that it's nice and a little more readable. Finally, I'm going to have a couple of texts. One is gonna just display the notification data and the other one is gonna display the token. Oh, and I think it's dot data, right? Yeah. Okay, so this should be good enough to get us started. Let's jump into some EAS stuff now. All right, so for this next part, things get pretty easy. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the Expo Application Services or EAS setup for push notifications in iOS. This is like super, super easy, guys. That's why I did iOS first. It's pretty magic what Expo is able to do here. So the first thing you wanna do is just log into your account for EAS. Uh, dot lab. After that, you start an EAS build. And inside here, pick iOS. At this point, you can basically just yes your way through every single thing, but be especially careful that when you get to the actual push notifications part, that you say, yes, you want that set up for you as well. You can just pick the default notifier. It'll show it to you inside of the console application that you see. And basically, yeah, I'm just yesing my way through everything. And in a minute, what we'll do is we'll actually test this out. All right, so now that we've finished that, the last thing that we need to do is actually compile it. So we're gonna do that with the command npx expo run iOS dash dash device. We have to use the device flag because this will only work on a hardware, like physical iPhone or a physical Android phone. One thing to keep in mind, this command was giving me problems earlier. If that happens to you, delete this iOS folder and run the command again, it'll regenerate it. And in my case, at least that fixed all the problems and everything worked just fine. So I'm gonna compile this and we'll come back here when it's all finished and test everything out. All right, so here we are with the app compiled. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to close it and I'm going to use this Expo push notifications tool and I will leave a link to that in the description. But basically what I'm going to do is I console logged the token that it gives back. I'm going to paste that in here and I'll create a message. I'll say, hello, YouTube and body. I don't know YT is cool. And then after that, I'll make the subtitle subtitle and I will send the notification. And as you can see, that works. And if we tap on it, it opens our app. All right, let's move on to Android. So for Android, the first thing that we need to do is create a new Firebase project for it. I'm gonna call this Expo Push Notifications. You can just set it up just like you would any default project. Nothing really special has to happen here. 
I'll cut back when the project's all finished generating. All right, so now that we have our Firebase project, the next thing that we're gonna wanna do is go back into our terminal and run npx expo prebuild. This is gonna generate the Android folder and I'm just gonna use the default package name here. So let's create an Android app. I'm gonna nickname it Android Push and I'll register it. Next thing I'm gonna do is download the Google services JSON file. And then back in VS Code, I'm gonna open Android app. And then I'm gonna take that file and I'm gonna place it within the app directory. And because mine has this two at the end, I'm just gonna peel that off. Next thing I need to do is go to the app.json. And in the app.json, there's this Android section. In here, what you're gonna to wanna to do is specify Google services file. It's gonna be the Android folder under the app directory. And it's gonna be called Google services.json. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is we want to register our build with EAS and we can do that using EAS build and we're just going to do this for Android. This will create the project over on the back end. I actually don't even need to wait for this to finish. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go back to our Firebase project, go to settings, project settings, then go to service accounts. Here, what you'll want to do is generate a new private key. And uh, there's my key. So I'm gonna go into my Expo application services page. You wanna go to credentials. If I refresh, my Android app should be there and it is. So now I'm gonna scroll down to FCM V1 service account key. You need to click on this. You would upload a new key, go to select file. And mine should be at the top of my downloads there, and it is. And there you go. There's a bit of a UI bug here on EAS, but you don't need to worry about that too much. All right, so last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna try this in Android. And to do that, we do npx expo run Android. Again, dash dash device. You need to be running this on an actual real Android device. You can't use the simulator. And I'm gonna pick my Pixel 7. And when that's done compiling, we're gonna give this a shot. All right, so the application's all compiled now and ready to go. One thing to keep in mind, I did have some issues with compiling. For some reason, the Google services.json wasn't being picked up and I was getting an error at the bottom that would tell me that I wasn't initializing Firebase. If you see that error, just delete the Android folder and regenerate it using prebuild. That fixed it for me. I think this is just happening to me because I have so many takes and I have to kind of do this over and over a few times, but if it does happen to you, that's how to fix it. So now what we're gonna do is go into the app and inside of the bundling server here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the expo push token and actually I'm gonna reload the app just to make sure that's the correct one. So I'm gonna copy that token now I'm gonna go into here, the Expo push notification service. And then I'm gonna say, hello, YouTube Android. And I'll say Android is cool. Then what I'm gonna do is on Android, I'm gonna force FCM v1 because this is what we're actually testing, the new way of doing push notifications with Firebase. And my channel ID is gonna be default. So now I'm going to Kill the app and lock the phone. And let's see if that comes through. And of course it does. You can see my hello YouTube Android. And then if I tap on it, it opens the application just as we'd expect. One more quick thing to note that I thought was pretty cool. If you send the notification while the app is open, it'll actually give you all the information from the notification. All I did here was just kind of pretty printed it. You can pick out the information as you'd like here. But yeah, that's a nice bonus just for fun. Anyway, guys, that's how to set up um, push notifications with Expo in your um, app. I hope you guys enjoyed and happy hacking.